All right, well, today we've got the old school vintage nostalgia AE86 built in the shop, and it's time to get this thing dialed in. We have some pretty massive upgrades for it, and we're going to tune it and get it running perfect, ideally, assuming we do our jobs right. So we're gonna be switching from the constant velocity bike carbs to a set of race carbs. They are super cool, they sound cool, they look cool, they're a very unique setup, and it should run a lot better on them, and we're gonna have the jetting to dial in the air fuels with them. So those are gonna be here tomorrow. In the meantime, the other performance project we're gonna be doing is building a custom header for this thing. I've always wanted to build a high rise header where the runners come up, they loop down and go back down. It's overly elaborate, it's silly, it's not really necessary. This header probably flows plenty for this little engine, but it's uh, it's cool. I've always wanted to do it. They look sweet, they sound sweet, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna build ourselves a high rise header and uh, get those carbs on tomorrow, get this thing dialed in. And finally get to feel what all of the power this thing has to offer. It feels like all the way up to 8,000, 8,500 RPM. It should be pretty sweet. We should pick up a ton of power doing these projects. It's gonna make a pretty big world of difference. So I'm gonna quit your jabber and we're gonna get right to work. So the first thing we needed to do was get the header that's on the car currently pulled out of here. Now this is an aftermarket header. It's just a low rise. It's plenty header for this application. You know, we're not gonna gain a ton of power by building this header. It's more of a fun, rewarding, satisfying project. And for me, an aesthetic thing. You know, I could make up all these reasons why it's gonna work better and make more power. But in reality, that that's not it. It's just cool and I wanna do it. So once we had the header pulled out, we needed to test fit this header flange that I got. This is a kind of cheap eBay one that I found probably for building a turbo header, which is not at all what we're doing. It's really thick, which is nice. The downside is the material that I have is really meant for a much larger engine. I have inch and three quarter stainless U-bends. I have a ton of them from different header projects. So I wanna use them, I don't wanna waste them. This is a good project to use them on, but they're a little bit bigger than this flange is meant for. This flange is meant for inch and a half tubing. Now, the modeling box that we're gonna use for this require an inch and three quarter starter tube. So I'm just gonna tack weld these little pieces on here just to get us started and put our initial pieces on so that we can kind of mock this header up. This kit is really nice for figuring out what kind of header designs will and will not work before you commit to cutting and welding anything because otherwise sometimes you can end up boxing yourself into a corner by starting out with a design in your head and then getting halfway through it and realizing you're not gonna get from A to B with that design. So this allows us to try out different kind of theories see how they fit up and then go from there. So we've got the starter blocks on. Now the other challenge here with the material is these blocks are in three inch centerline radius and two inch centerline radius. Now the problem is I have about two and a half inch centerline radius. So what the centerline radius is, is basically the dimension from the center of the bend to the outside of the tube. So the smaller the number, the tighter the bend. Now obviously with a tighter bend, it's easier to zig and zag your way through tight and odd areas. So I decided to model it with the two inch because between the fact that mine isn't all the way up to three inch and the fact that I can kind of cheat it a little bit with how I cut the tube, I can cut the tube at some angles and do some certain things to, to tighten up the radius, it should get us in the ballpark. If we can make it work with two inch, it's gonna be a little tighter with the actual material, but we should be able to get kind of roughly the same shape out of that. So the biggest challenge here is dealing with the distributor. It's right above the first exhaust port. So one runner has to go back and tuck between the other two runners, and that's really where this becomes a challenge. So. While I'm working on that, Josue started working on a battery box. We decided to relocate the battery to the rear. I'm not normally a fan of doing this on street cars, but in this case, it's gonna clear up a lot of room in the engine bay for us, and it's gonna make things a lot cleaner. So I decided to let him try to tackle this and try to help him through. Yeah, yeah, you, you can look like, see, oh, there's a gap a little bit before it bottoms out in the channel. There, check that. It needs a tiny bit more. Yeah, that's it, I believe. That's it, yeah. So I'm gonna do the other one, same process. Mine's really are crooked. Hmm, How's send that it.
Yeah. Yeah. Looks pretty good. All right, now for the important bends. Make sure you can see that on the front edge, otherwise it'll just bend weird. Try to make sure you're always like in the center of this. Otherwise it'll bend crooked. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, that's fine. Better to be a little over because then the battery will fit tight. Yep. Oh, hold on. So you're not going to be able to finish it out. So whenever this starts to fit tight, you're going to have to stop and bend it the rest of the way by hand. So cool, so smooth. So these are Kihan, I think that's how you say it, flat slide carburetors. They're basically race carburetors for motorcycles and since we're already running bike carbs, they should swap on. These are supposed to be the spacing to fit on my manifold. I'm a little worried because they look to be even spacing. Well, I mean, that looks, yeah, we're gonna find out. So we're gonna take a break from the, uh, from the header build and try to get these on. We might toss the old header back on just so we can go drive it with these. I've been anxiously waiting for these for like a month or two and uh, I'm really excited to try them out. They were supposed to come with jets two sizes up and two sizes down, but they didn't. So hopefully I can get those. Uh, that was one of the things I was excited about, being able to jet them and dial them in, but you know, maybe they'll be mint right out of the box. We don't know. Uh, we're going to have to do some stuff to get the throttle cable to work. Uh, we got some tinkering to do to make these fit, so we're going to start working on that. So we got to work on pulling the old bike carbs off as well as the so far progress, the modeled header where we're at now. I need to start building from where I'm at now anyway, so it works out. It needed to come off regardless. Now, one of the neat things about these carburetors is they have these thread in fittings on the backside so you can change them to different sizes and different things to fit different applications. They're more of a universal race carb than a carb that was OE on something and adapted. Now we're trying to fit these on the manifold. We were hoping we could just kind of squish them on there uh, for the time being but it's not looking like that's going to work. All right well unfortunately as I suspected our stack height is not correct. They are too wide on the outside. The middle's about right, uh, but the outsides are, are too tight. You can see how we have a really tight gap here and a wider gap here. This gap's correct. Our stack width is basically 85 mil, 85 mil, 92 mil in the middle. So it is a little wider in the middle, just not, it's, it's not correct. So we've got a couple options. We can bail on these, which I really don't want to do. I was really have my heart set on these. Uh, or we can try to modify this manifold. And I think that's what we're going to do. I don't quite have the exact material I need, but I basically need to move these out. Basically each end one out about 15 millimeters, which starts to put us out of range of the port. So it's going to get a little tricky. I'm just going to take it apart, I guess, start hacking it up. And uh, I think one way or another, I can make it work. It's going to take some elbow grease. All right, before we get into the next part of this project, we got a little side project to do. I am gonna build a new BMX bike. So I used to ride, I started out with riding. I was always into cars as a kid. My dad was into cars, my granddad was into cars. You know, that, that was kind of a thing that ran in my blood. But before I got my license, I got into BMX and that was kind of my life. Been riding slow through the back, blocks, red coupe, switching lane. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yo! 
until drifting took over. When I was, you know, from like 14 to 17, I rode. And then once I got heavy into drifting, I didn't have time or money to do both. So I, drifting took over, then I had a broken car for six months, a year. I started riding again, then I got out of it again. I tried again a little bit when I met Adam and me and him became friends because he was riding a lot then. And then I haven't picked up a bike since. And I've lately had the kick, have the craving to start riding again, go to the skate park, just enjoy that. You know, the fun of just cruising to the skate park for an evening. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a new bike. Now, more than that, what I'm so excited about here is I've never, in that entire time, I was never able to just build a bike with all brand new parts from the ground up, everything matching. I never got to do that. I started with a complete, then eventually I got a different frame and I broke the rear wheel and scooted it to the skate park, rode chainless for like three or four months. And then finally got a wheel set and just slowly over time, one part at a time, you know, and I always dreamed of one day being able to afford to just build one from scratch with all new parts and have everything match because you know, my style would change over the years and I'd like this color now or this thing. And it just, it never, it never matched. And it was never that aesthetically pleasing. And I, I've always wanted to do this and I'm very excited about it. So I got a whole bunch of Shadow and Sabrosa parts. Luckily they are local, Sparky's Distribution is not far at all from my house. They've been kind of like a staple since I started riding, you know, and we've got basically a whole bike here. It's kind of crazy that a whole bike fits in this box and this box. Everything we need to build a bike and we are going to complete kind of a childhood dream of mine, building a bike from scratch, from the ground up. It's, it's gonna be pretty cool, I'm excited. We're also, I need to order some more parts and that way I can put my old bike back together. It needs more than I expected, but that way Josue can come ride. I can force him to go to the skate park with me. We can throw the bikes on the top of the M3. Now, funny, fun fact, I've known Raldo and Josue for 10 years, over 10 years, it would be like 12 years. Anyway, we met through BMX. They used to ride the same time I rode. And um, one day we were at the skate park and it was like, oh, you like cars too? And we decided to leave from the skate park and go to a car meet. And uh, essentially the rest is history, so they say. So I think I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. I like the idea of throwing the bikes on the rack of the M3, cruising to the skate park. Even if we barely ride, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time. So, that being said, I'm itching. I know it's kind of random, but <laughs> I just, I wanna do it and I wanna take you along for the ride because it should be cool. It's gonna be a cool feeling to see this thing complete. So, enough jibber jabber, back to work. So the last time I did any real work on a bike, I was basically a teenager with very minimal tools and very, very minimal knowledge. So. In theory, this should be a lot easier this time. However, there are some, some nuanced things with putting a bike together that I just didn't remember. I mean, it's been over 10 years and I didn't remember exactly what I was supposed to do when it comes to putting the bottom bracket in. You know, all in all, compared to cars, it is incredibly simple, but still, there's a little bit of things you need to know. So we start with getting the cranks in the frame, getting the seat and seat post on. Then we go ahead and get the fork, the headset, and the bars set up and get those on. And then essentially our main frame situation is complete. Now, another thing that having tools is a lot easier to do is uh, the grip. We always had so much trouble getting grips on, trying, you know, hairspray. There was all these different tricks. But if you just use an air compressor, spray on the inside of the grips, they slide right on. No troubles at all. It's, it's the little things that tools help you with. So once that's complete, the main frame is done. Now it is time to build the wheels. Now I've only built a couple of wheels even in my lifetime of riding BMX. So this isn't something I'm the most familiar with, but it's a pretty easy process once you know the waist pattern and you know the steps. It's really not too bad to put these together. Josue and I each took a wheel and just had at it. Now it's funny because it was almost like a little bit of a race to the finish. She arguably had the harder wheel with it being a rear one, but it's really not a bad process. It's tedious and you definitely have to pay attention if you miss a step early on, it'll bite you later, but overall not too bad. Drive, I have this shadow mm -hmm. oh. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to make sure. That's we what I kind of thought you were and trying we to do. And we both put this on yeah. this side. You got a 50-50 shot. smooth. But with the hardest part out of the way of lacing up the wheels, there's not much left. Now, I did forget to get rim strips, so we had to use this Tessa tape instead because I was too antsy. I didn't want to order some and wait for them. I wanted to get this done. So with our homemade rim strips in, all we got to do is put the tires on and the tubes on. And what's funny is I remember this being just an absolute nightmare when I was a kid. Like, trying to put tires on was always such a pain. And now it feels like such a piece of cake compared to a lot of the car stuff we do. So with the wheels wheels complete basically the last step is just to put the wheels on the frame setup get everything tightened down and in place 
and we've got a complete bike. Aside from the chain, this thing is done. That was every bit as satisfying as I had hoped it would be. <laughs> that is sick, check it out. What a rig. I love the red and gray tires. The little bit of red accents, which works out with the MR2 frame that we got. It's got red in it, and black and polished everything else. All we gotta do is put the chain on now uh, and, and put the wheel on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no big deal, little things. <laughs> It is. There's so many teeth. I'm gonna have to do the old school trick to make your hoe out of taking the grease out of it. <laughs> spins back in 360s. Good clean 360s on flat into stuff. That was like my trick. Bars and 360s. I used to do a lot of 360s. And bar spins, but bar spins are always ugly. So like if I do get them back, <laughs> I like to do them cleaner. I did do whips for a period of time. but I can't say I really had it. I only had it for a few weeks. But check it out, it matches the bed. What a rig. All right, we're gonna go horse around with this thing and uh, then we're gonna get back to work. Just had to get this little side project knocked out. I couldn't look at these parts any longer and not tackle it. So before we start hacking up this manifold to try and see if we can make it work for these carbs, the first thing we need to do is determine if we can make the material I have work. So I either had a size too small or a size too big. So I'm gonna try to basically hand machine this tubing down to get it to be the right size. So I basically ground in a barb and then I'm trying to grind down some of that wall thickness. Fortunately, it is really thick, so we have some of that leeway to do this, but it's definitely a challenging prospect to try to grind this down enough to match the size that we need it to be. We need it to be as big as it can at the base, but not super big at the top or in the middle, so that way the coupler slides over it and it's not a fight. So I just went to town on the belt grinder using all the different attachments. I love this Ameribrig belt grinder. This thing has it has just been so much more handy than I ever anticipated it being, and I have used it for so many projects over the years I've had it now. So it worked. We got it pretty much where we needed it. The coupler slides on. So now it's time to commit on the manifold side of things. You know, once we cut this apart, there's no going back. So we've got to make something work. So I cut the two ends off. I'm just going to modify those. I'm going to leave the center alone. Now, the ideal scenario here would be to build this all from scratch, but I don't have a flange. I don't want to try to cut this flange apart. I don't have the right tubing to do the starter pieces. There's no good way to build this from scratch without ordering a bunch of materials and waiting so we're gonna try to make this work I've got a rough idea in my head but I'm not quite sure how it's gonna pan out in practice I basically want to put these pieces on slightly angled out so that the direction of flow kind of tapers into the piece that's already there that's why I left this long side on it now the problem is getting that to all line up like I wanted it to in my head is just not working out like I was expecting I thought this would be a little bit more straightforward I tried to oval out the piping some to get the angles a little better and no matter what I do it just isn't going to work like I wanted it to so we're going to have to go back to kind of the original idea and do this the janky way just basically stack these on top as far over as we can with a little bit of overhang weld them on and then grind the living crap out of the inside so I went ahead and got them ground to where they were the right angle got them tacked on and then we're gonna go ahead and weld these out and then see what we can do about making the inside something decent for flow so the other problem we have to tackle is we've got a pretty big gap to deal with where we weld these on you know they're offset about 15 millimeters so we've got a 15 millimeter gap to fill so I made some little pieces some little plates to go in there to set on top and weld in 
then again, we, th there's a lot of ways we could have made this look nicer, <laughs> but right now we're just going for function over form. We just want something that's going to work so we can see how these carburetors feel and how the engine runs on them. So once I got those pieces all welded on, it's time to just go to town with the carbide burr. We have a ton of material to remove in here. We're going to be working at this for a while. There is, it's rough rougher than I was hoping it would be. All right, well, we've got a manifold with roughly the right spacing. It looks like the carbs are gonna line up. It's not perfect, and it's definitely not aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, but it's what we could do in a pinch with the materials that we had on hand without rebuilding the whole thing. If it gets us by, it gets us by. So I'm coming in here and burring out basically all the roughness. Since I welded this over another piece, we've got basically the interior walls poking up. So we need to grind those down and smooth that all out to the weld so it's a nice smooth flow and the air doesn't hit a bunch of turbulence. You can see I've got this side most of the way done. Still need some material removal with the burr and then we'll go in with a sanding disc and try to smooth it out. Now, unfortunately, I have these aluminum-specific carbide birds. They have much bigger flutes than the steel carbide birds, but even with the bigger flutes, they still get clogged up. The aluminum's really soft, and it gets clogged in there, and then they stop cutting, so you spend a lot of time cleaning out the burr <laughs> as opposed to just grinding. All right, we're gonna break out the big guns now with the drum disc. So this is a die grinder like this one, but this is the M18 die grinder. And I wasn't sure how much I would use this thing because it is obviously a lot larger, but it is very handy when you need a lot of torque for a sustained period of time. So now that we've burned it out, we're gonna get in here with this and try to clean it up, smooth it out, make it look like nothing ever happened. I don't know why I was putting my gloves on. I meant to put my respirator on. All right. This M18 die grinder has been the absolute bee's knees, man. For stuff like this where you're putting a lot of load onto a sanding disc and grinding for a while, this thing absolutely rips. All right, I think that's good enough for what this is. Man, I always make the mistake wearing my favorite shirts, these embroidered Garage Built Co. shirts that we sell on days where I get them super dirty. These are my favorite shirts, they're the nicest shirts by far, and I have a handful of them, but I try to wear them when I know I'm not gonna get them super gross, and didn't plan that very well. If you're interested in these, these are really nice shirts, I'm telling you. Uh, GarageBoatCo.com, we got a bunch of merch on there, we got the Magnetic Koozie, look at this. I never promote my own merch, I need to get better at it. Magnetic Koozie, take a gander here, boom. Put your drink anywhere, boom, so useful. I love these. They're super durable. Me and Osway have been running the same one since we came out with these. They're still kicking, no problems like brand new. So garagebuildco.com, check it out. If you're interested in some merch, we got embroidered hats that are really nice too. Check them out, check them out. All right, let me show you this. Pretty proud of this, honestly. When I first started hitting this with the burr, I did not think we were gonna get this uh, cleaned up as much as I wanted. So you can see it smoothed out pretty well. Pretty, pretty solid. That should be a plenty okay path for the airflow. This one's just as good. Pretty dang smooth, all things considered. I am really happy with that. So aside from this kind of ugliness of it being offset, all in all, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do some finishing touches, clean my work area, clean this thing up, and then we can start trying to put the car together with it. So we went ahead and got the manifold tossed back on. Fortunately, when you take the carbs off this manifold, it is an absolute piece of cake to install. You can get in there with the electric ratchet, zip them all down, and then snug them up. So I went ahead and lubricated up the couplers because basically the manifold side and the carb side is a, just a touch big for these couplers but I'd rather them be a little tight than a little loose so now is the moment of truth can we get these on the spacing's still not perfect I went as wide as I could but fortunately with a little finagling a little massaging with the pick we were able to get them in there and get everything lined up and that's a win for me man I was really hoping we didn't go through all that work modifying this manifold for these to still not fit dang those look sick Check them out, boom, boom. Velocity stacks. I love the way these carbs look. How oh, they're square, very tall. You can barely see the ugliness of the manifold now. The carbs distract you. 
So that's it. All right, well, so he's finishing up the wiring for a rear mounted battery. See, we put a terminal post here for the factory battery things. It's got the fuses in it and such. Power wire running all the way to the back. We're still gonna clean up all of this eventually uh, because again, we're gonna move the ignition box over here. So then the run to the distributor will just be boom, boom, instead of having to come from all the way over there. But one step at a time. Battery is relocated back here, front and center. You can see the battery box, we've got rubber. Top and bottom, it's nice and squished in there. I love these little excess power batteries, man. They are the bee's knees. Small, but very dense. Pack a lot of punch, so. Yeah, okay, next up on the agenda. Once he gets done with that, I'll have to put the header back in. I've got to figure out making a throttle cable bracket. We kind of got by with not really having to make one on the last setup, but on this, we're gonna have to make one. And I'm not quite sure how yet, so I'm gonna try to figure that out. All right, well, I was a little worried that was gonna be more challenging than it was, but pretty easy little throttle cable bracket there. The hole isn't perfectly in line with where the cable needs to go, so it'd be pulling offset. So basically I had to offset the hole a little bit to the right on the plate and the slot a little bit to the left on the plate to get this where it needed to be. We left some slack in it. So Slate's finishing up the battery stuff. We need to toss the header back in, distributor back on. I got a new O-ring for it. I went and picked it up from the parts store today. They're on though. The FCR Kihon flat slides are installed and it's pretty much really the look I was going for. These things are so dang cool. So neat. All right, uh, yeah, back to work. Let's get this thing finished up. Shooter went in easy, hopefully I lined it up correctly. Headers back in, distributor back on, carbs are done. It's time, it's time to put power to it. You ready, Osway? I think so. You ready to hook the battery up? You do the honors. I'm gonna take this one out of the Oh, I'm glad you remembered that, because I didn't. You need a 10 mil. Come on, keep up, keep up. Day in the life of Osway. Dude, who put this lift so close to the wall? <laughs> you do, you gotta almost turn sideways. All right, battery installed and hooked up. Nothing caught on fire. <laughs> so we are, think we're good to try and start her up. All right, guesses, guesses. You comment below, do you think it's gonna start first try? When I say first try, I mean without having to work on anything. Like, you know, we may have to adjust the little idle thingy up or down. Uh, we may have to starter fluid it. No, no, no starter fluid. First try just without you know, maybe a few cranks, whatever. Yeah, goal is no starter fluid. No starter fluid, not have to change anything, do anything. I have reasonable confidence. I'm about 70%. I'm gonna go with that it's gonna start. It's gonna start. It's gonna start, it's all gonna right. Start. Comment below, you think it's gonna start or not? Don't fast forward, don't cheat. Let it build some fuel pressure. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's not much. We gotta it's check for leaks. So I got two.
on that turf noise though. Tune-ups off. Am I coming? I'm gonna come in with yeah, you? Yeah, you're coming with uh, me. Uh, back it out, oh, back it out. up it'll it'll should idle right we had it set warm all right dude it sounds so cool <laughs> you hear it click, 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 click. even with the hood shot you hear it switch those headlight freaking cover things didn't rattle so much we to address we're gonna that. see if we can try to yeah see if we can try to like tighten them up That 
intake noise is so good. All right, well, the thing is running about as good as I could have hoped for carbs out of the box. All the trouble we had with the other setups, you know, the last setup I thought ran good, and then when we put an air fuel gauge on it, it was like 17, 18 air fuels. These are super, super close, straight out the box. It idles good, way better than it did before. Uh, it runs good, runs clean. We have a little hesitation that we've got to fix, that just tip in hesitation. But other than that, man, I'm, I'm stoked. I was really torn on whether or not to go with these carbs or fix up the Weathers, and I really wanted these. It's kind of like a, a nerd part I've wanted for a while, so I decided to go for it, and I'm definitely super happy with the result. We still got some tinkering to do, especially an old car like this, there's always tinkering, um, but we're getting there, we're getting there. I mean, we've got the diff rebuilt, sorted, no more gear one, brand new gear set up, brand new LSD, that's working good. The engine's running the best it ever has, by far, by a pretty big margin. We minimized our oil leaks. Uh, we still got a big project left in pulling the engine out, resealing it, painting the bay, that's a big thing, because all this stuff looks really cool and nice, but it, with the red bay, it's eh. Um, cleaning up the wiring, switching to a programmable ignition box so we can have a timing curve, which will make it even quicker, and then building that header that we started on. I wanted to finish that, but when the carbs came in, that's really what I was waiting on. And I wanted to see how it ran, you know, same for same with this header with the different carbs. So anyway, I'm jibber jabbering on and on. I'm pumped, man. I'm so happy with this thing. I really like this car a lot. Puts, uh, puts a lot of smiles on my face and it's like we're slowly chipping away at it. So anyway, that being said, we're running out of time. It's getting dark. The day is ending. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here, but I want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.